the psychological negative feedback loop of being a starving artist. The reality is, it's a psychological condition. And I've seen it affect so many people, including myself, into believing that this is the only possible reality for anyone who loves to do art and is considering doing it for a living. This video serves as a reminder for myself to not be stuck in that loop and also for anyone else who feels like they're stuck in this loop. Hello everyone, my name is Mehram Adad Gerasmo Musraf Ali Gamez and in this video, I'm going to be going over the three main things that I believe keep people trapped into that psychological negative feedback loop of being a starving artist. The first thing is you actually get in your own way. You are getting in your own way. And as funny as that sounds, we are so good at getting on our own way because we have these stories that we believe are true and we constantly sabotage our own self and we constantly limit our own self. There's something in the brain called the reticular activating system. And if you're watching this channel for a while now, you know that I like to mention this a lot. And the reason I do is it's very fascinating how it works. And it's, it's quite simple, really. It's a filter that filters out the information that's in your reality. And it does that based on the stories you tell your own self. It's very useful because otherwise you'll be getting bombarded by information every single second and your brain would get fried. But having that system in place assures that you only grab the information that's useful or related to your reality or the story that you're telling yourself. If the story you're telling yourself is that I reached my max, there's no opportunities for artists, and I cannot make a living through this art, then your brain will scan the universe looking for every single thing that reassures that this stays true. And everything else that could be an amazing opportunity or a potential to learn a new skill is going to be completely ignored and dismissed. And they've done studies to show that. There's a study known as the Tetris effect, where when people play Tetris for hours and hours every day, they start seeing Tetris in the world and they start trying to put things together in their mind. And you might have experienced something similar if you played like a video game for too long. And I know it sounds funny and ridiculous, but this is just kind of a symptom of having that reticular activating system and how your brain works. And whatever story you're telling yourself is going to continue to be true because you're ensuring that it's true by scanning all the information that fits that story. And that story is very comforting for the ego because when you realize that you've reached your max and this is all you can do and there's nothing else you can do and everything else is out of your control because the world is unfair, then you give yourself the excuse to not have to work hard and discipline yourself and do all these things that can be very difficult, even though they can help you reach the goal that you want to reach. And these stories are reinforced by other people. And that brings me to my second point, which is the communities that we surround ourselves with. Now, imagine not only your story is being told to you and you're getting in your own way, but also everyone else around you is telling you the same exact story and telling themselves the same exact story. Now it's reinforced by everyone around you that is in your community. I can almost guarantee you that every time you see a starving artist, they're never alone. They're always in a group of other starving artists. And they're always telling themselves that same story and telling each other that same story. It's not necessarily directly anyone's fault. And sometimes these communities have an unhealthy competition where they compete almost on like a slightly toxic level where they almost don't want the other person to succeed. They don't necessarily come from an abundance mindset. An abundance mindset helps you see that there's a lot of opportunities for everyone and helps you see that everyone can succeed together. In fact, people succeed more when they want other people to succeed because they have that abundance mindset. And they give value to each other and they're always pushing each other to get better. Being in that community of starving artists is not necessarily anyone's fault. It's not anyone's malicious intent. It actually usually comes from family and friends, the society that these people are initially around. Which brings me to my third point, family and friends. First of all, you have to understand that your family and friends, they want the best for you. They want you to be safe and they want you to be stable and they want to see you successful. But sometimes the road to hell is paved with good intentions. They have good intentions. They want to see you do great. But 
they don't see that happening in art simply because it's actually rare to become a successful artist and make a good living good comfortable living because it is difficult it's not clear how to get there nothing is predictable art is not predictable and that's almost like a definition in art if it was predictable no one would like it but being on the unpredictable path means that a lot of tough things can be in your way as a first generation american i know my family came here to secure a stable future that's not something that's easy to obtain in a third world country so leaving a career of engineering and venturing into the world of art and unpredictability to them seems like i'm being unreasonable and i'm throwing all my opportunities in their hard work away and they just want to see me happy and successful understanding that is very important because then you can start educating your friends and families telling them how you're being strategic and telling them how you're learning how to grow the business educating them on how this means so much more to you and makes you so much more happy to pursue this and fail trying to do something you love rather than live the rest of your life in something mediocre that you don't love so as you can see all these three main points are connected your friends and family tell you these stories because they want to protect you and then you have a group of these people who are being told by their friends and families these stories and then you believe them and the group believes them and it, and it keeps reinforcing that story and that belief over and over and now it becomes your reality and now you cannot see any opportunities outside yourself and now you have even more resistance towards self-discipline and doing the things that might not be as fun. Like learning how to be a business owner on top of learning how to be an artist. I believe it's very important to start dismantling the story and testing out and seeing the opportunities that are around you. And once you start training that mindset, you can actually start seeing all these opportunities and you start becoming more optimistic and it changes from becoming a negative feedback loop to a positive feedback loop that makes you even thrive further in your creativity and your career. A lot of the things I talk about in this channel are geared towards photography and filmmaking, but they also apply more on the psychological end of being a full-time creative. If you want a quick morning exercise that will actually help you get in that positive mindset, and see the opportunities and become even better at creativity, you can check out this video. And if you wanna see how photography can actually control your reality, you should check out this video.